Timothy chapter 2, and uh, I want to get, I have two hours tonight, so I, I promise you that I'll do half of it if you promise to come back next Wednesday night, because he's going to be in a revival in South Carolina somewhere, and uh, I don't know why I get, I don't know why I get this, I, I somehow or another, there's plenty of fellas around here, one sitting right over there. Uh, that could do this, and so, uh, but we're glad you're here, and uh, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, before I start, let's go ahead and pray again, thank God for all that's going on, and uh, I do ask you to pray, hey, it's important that people pray, okay, Lord, we come to, come to you tonight, uh, not only to pray for this service, but we pray for the revival going on there. And we ask you now just to continue it, and Lord, may it just break out and go tonight and, and continue, Lord. I pray that you'd watch over Jeremy, and as he travels tonight back, and I'd ask you, God, to bless the families. I ask you to bless each one here. Each visitor, Lord, thank you for them. And we'd ask now that you'd supply the needs for the spiritual needs tonight and the physical needs that might be here tonight. We'll thank you and praise you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. My understanding, John Dillinger did a fantastic job over in the Bible Institute uh, la uh, last night. And uh, uh, I think it got to, of course, he's teaching numerology, but he got one, got to one. So he's going to have to do two more. Really, I thought it was just going to be two, but he's going to do two more uh, to finish it up. Uh, let me say, in saying that, if you want to get in on something, that'll condition your mind and fix your mind. You get in on that. And not only the numerology, but get in on the Bible Institute. I would that you'd really pray about starting when it starts over, whenever that'll be. Uh, but I'm sure there's some courses you could take now and that'll prepare you for whenever you do get in on it. Uh, how many of you have been to the Bible Institute? Hold up your hand. All right, okay, all right, amen. Now. Uh, tonight in First Timothy, uh, Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter two, Second Timothy chapter two. <clears throat> Be patient tonight. This is uh, could go real sour because it's a little heavy in some places. But if you get a little nugget, you might get two next time. So just hang in there. Okay, Amen. Now, on on Second Timothy chapter number two, verse fifteen. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, if you'd like to have the outline, I think we have it. I think Jeremy has it and uh, outlined. Uh, you got there. Let me read this off. Number one, you got study. Number two, to show thyself. Number three, approve uh, to God, a workman. Number four, that needeth not to be ashamed. Number six, rightly dividing. And then number seven, the word of truth. Now, that's a uh, kind of a outline of the verse. Now, in this verse here, it's got a command to study. Most uh, people uh, want to take the word study out, right? Most do. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I believe a person gets saved, they have gotten some saved around here uh, uh, during revival and whatever, but uh, I believe you need to uh, learn how to rightly divide, and that is to learn the context and learn the, uh, where you're studying and just not haphazardly go through the Bible and jump in and grab a verse and, and do like most of them do. Most time, uh, when you listen to somebody preach or teach, why well, it's like a, a smart board, amen? It's like a, a, all, it's like soup. It's all jammed together, you know? You don't know whether you're saved or lost or trying to get saved and trying to get lost or whatever. You don't know what's going on unless somebody rightly divides, puts the verses out to the lost through saved people and then the verses to saved people, which most of the Bible's written to saved people, okay? We're saved, and I mean, most of us, we need to study the Bible. Would you agree that we need to study the Bible? So, preacher, I'm here tonight. Okay, good. We need to study the Bible. Now, 
What's going to happen if you wrongly divide the word of God? Look at verse number 16. Notice it says, study show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Notice, but shun profane, profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Now that's what you have when it's not rightly divided. All you got is a sound, all you got is babbling, and babbling is like Bible. It's like a, like a bunch of words, it's, it's like a filter, it's like a, or fill, a filler, and it's like a, a person just talking and doesn't, didn't have any substance. So if you just go on and on and on and on, you'll say, what in the world is he saying? You gotta get it rightly divided, you gotta know what you're reading and what you're doing. So that's kind of uh, a situation we have. Most of places, they've got the uh, babblings and they've, that increase un, ungodliness. Let me, let me run th through some of the reason now. Look at verse 17. And their word will eat as doth a canker or cancer of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. That's what you get. You get a bunch of junk, see? They, they got false doctrine, even in verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrown the faith of some. And you don't think it's important to rightly divide? Hey, they've done started wrongly dividing and saying the resurrection's already past and, and overthrown the faith of some people there. You see that? But in verse 19, evidently it's a question of your salvation or the firm foundation. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand assured having this seal. The Lord, knoweth it, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Aren't you glad for that? And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. There's some verses that talk about how to get saved and getting saved is simple. Then there are verses in this Bible that we don't like to tell us how to separate and how to live for the Lord. Amen. But you know, you're going down through here, just very briefly, I'm not doing this uh, part necessarily, but going down through here, and what happens is when they, uh, whoever begins to wrongly divide the Bible and jam it all together and, and put everything out there where you just grab what you want to or whatever, then here you get in a trap. Look at verse 25 and 26, and I'll go ahead with the message tonight in meekness in, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God prevents you, will give them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. You think that's, that's talking about these people out here? No, that's talking about uh, these churches around America and schools and whatever. They're in a snare. They've been taken in by a trap. And the trap is that the devil has got them and they're not rightly divide the Bible. It's important to rightly divide the Bible. So I'm gonna show you that tonight as best I can. It's very important that we rightly divide the Word of God. And I want to show you that tonight. First of all, let's go to 1 John, and I'm going to give one that's kind of off color, and that is off uh, key. Get 1 John, turn to 1 John. Now in 1 John, chapter number 1, 2, part of most of 2, you've got there the old nature. <clears throat> Actually, basically, 1 John, I'm talking about 1 John, you got chapter 1 and chapter 2 down to uh, verse number, the last verse of that chapter. And here you've got uh, people that uh, sin. For instance, uh, uh, verse number 8, if you say you're without sin, you'd, you've deceived yourself. That is the sin nature. Then he says, and, and the truth is not in you. Then he says, if we'll confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Is that a saved person? Yes, that's a saved person. A person can be saved and yet deny some of the truths of the word of God. But now notice in chapter number uh, two and verse number 29, and this is the first time you have this in, that, in this chapter, it says, or in this book really, if you know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. That's the first time you have that right there in that, in first John, you got chapter one, chapter two down right there. That's the first time you have that. Now, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? 
That tells you that all of the previous verses that talk about the old nature, the old nature, that is the old man. Did y'all bring the old man with you tonight? <laughs> you, yeah, you did. You, you, if you're not dead, I mean, you, I mean, he's out in the graveyard if you died. You brought the old man with you. I'm not talking about women bringing the old man or whatever. The old lady, you are not to call her that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, look at chapter 3 and verse number 9. I'll have to hurry. Amen. Verse 9. It says, whosoever is born of God. Notice this. Born of God. Born of God. Doth not commit sin. For his seed remains to him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. If you don't rightly divide the Bible, that will be most confusing to you. In one place it says, he that saith he's uh, without sin, or he that saith he has no sin, is a liar and the truth is not in him. If we confess our sins, if, you, if the Bible says you cannot sin, why would we need to confess our sins? Well, the whole thing is you got two natures after you got saved. You got an, a new nature added to you. And that new nature had a beginning inside whatever age you were. That new nature had a beginning. And I, I want to do the old man, new man, but I'm, I'm doing that in Sunday school. It's coming up in Colossians, but I'll do it just a little bit. Now, there's an old man that's born from Adam. And that old man that's born from Adam, he got saved, he's got born again, he's got a new nature in him, he's got God's nature, and the only way that you can produce the real righteousness is through the new man, and by the new man, and only by the new man, because if you try to live for the Lord Jesus Christ by the old man, the old man is created in, in, in unrighteousness, where the new man is created in righteousness. So there's, you got two. You've got to fight on your hands all day long. So the best thing to do, as Jeremy has said many times, when you get up in the morning, get out of the bed and get on your knees, say, now, old oh man, you're not having your way today. I mean, you just shut up. We're going to follow the Lord. We're going to claim uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brother, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable in God, which you can read the most service and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Then you'll know the will of God and what the will of God is. But there's two people, amen? And, and Jeremy has covered this thoroughly time and time again. But friends, there are those who say, well, now, preacher, that right there doesn't mean that he can't sin. It just means he'll not habitually sin, that he's, he won't continue. That's not what it said. That's not what it said. When you start there, you know what you're going to do? You're going to start questioning other verses. Then you go, go get a man's book over here, and you're going to read him, and he's going to say it doesn't really mean that. It doesn't really mean you how can't sin. No, your, your new part can't sin. You're sealed of God. If y'all read uh, Ephesians chapter number one and verse number 13 and 14, when you got saved, you got sealed. I mean, you got sealed by the Holy Ghost of God. I mean, circumcised, I mean, placed in Jesus Christ and the Bible says you're sealed of the day of redemption of the body. Amen. <laughs> I tell you what. When you see this, you start, uh, you know, examining this thing. And you can, and we're not studying First John, but I'm going to tell you, friends, you, you've got a contradiction here if you don't rightly divide it. You've got a contradiction. One place it says, there, confess your sins. The other place says, don't, you, you, you can't sin. Or you, uh, and that's why it says, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remains to him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. I just simply believe that you believe the Bible. I say you need to believe the Bible. And if you read a book, a man's book over here and it says something different, you put the cotton picking thing down and read your Bible. The reason we have the problem today in our country is that you go to the book shift and you pull off Dr. Wayne Doodle down at Podoc Institute to find out what he said about it. 
Have you ever noticed these fellows are supposed to have an answer for everything when you go to find out something that you need to find out that's really you want to find out because you haven't got it figured out yet? Uh, they don't deal with that. They deal with the simple ones. Well, we already read that. We already got that. Amen. Now, you understand, if you're saved, there's a new man inside and he wants to do right. He is the poor to do right. And that is number one. And I'll hurry up with number two. Take your Bible and turn to James chapter two. James chapter two, go back to your left, to James chapter two. We're talking about rightly dividing the word. You got to rightly divide it. You got to put the old man in his rightful place back there. And then you put the new man in the right place. He had a beginning there and you had an old man from your dad and from Adam all the way down. But in James chapter 2, how many of you have heard over and over and over again that uh, here in James chapter 2 from radio time, radio time, television time, over and over and over again. And you see there now, verse number all oh, 14, what do the prophet of brother, the man say he has faith and how not worse can faith save him? Oh, you say, well, preacher, there it is. No, it's not talking about your salvation, spiritual salvation. Not talking about that. Talking about taking care of one another in the tribulation period. It's addressed to 12 tribes of Israel. But now watch this. I'm going to go on down because of the time. He's got Abraham coming up here in verse 21, 22, 23, and 24. But now look at verse number 25. This writer is going to use a person in the Old Testament. And this person in the Old Testament is going to help us tonight in this rightly division, rightly divide the Bible. Likewise, likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works. When she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. You say, well now, wait a minute there. It says that she was justified by works when, when she received the the uh, Jews there that was spying the country, when she did that, she was justified by works. Folks, she was saved already. She wasn't getting saved, she was saved already. If you go look in Joshua chapter two, the Bible has a testimony about that woman right there being saved in, uh, it, before those spies got up there and those spies got there because she was saved. She hit them. She knew what God was doing and she hit them. You know the story, don't you? In Joshua chapter 2, where you find that, that uh, this woman here was a saved person. You, you got evidence of that right there. You got her testimony right there in those previous verses. And when those spies got up there, uh, that is spying out those Jews, spying out the country, uh, she got some, listen to me now, she got some benefit, she got some benefit for hiding those Jews and taking care of those Jews. Just like in the tribulation period, there'll be Jews that will run, be running from the Antichrist and, they will, and there will be Gentiles in places that will not take them in their home. There will be Gentiles that will take them in their home and take care of the Jews and they will get uh, rewarded for it. Not salvation. Now, I might need to slow down and go, I know I'm going too fast. Y'all got that, right? Amen. This is yeah and this is no. <laughs> Amen. When she, when she uh, hid those spies, what she told them, she said, I want my daddy and mother and my family delivered because the wall's going to come tumbling down. And you know what? Because, and that's what it says right here, right here, it is, it is she got rewards and benefits simply because she hid those spies and, uh, and took care of them and this does not mean that when she hit them that she had now an opportunity to go to, go to heaven and escape hell. Right. right. Y'all understand? Y'all keep it up with me, Brother David? Amen. All right. Everybody back? Okay. In other words, she will save by believing God. Now, 
If there's one thing that needs to be drove home, and that's simply this, that you're saved by believing God. Amen. Noah was saved by believing God in uh, uh, Genesis chapter number six and verse eight, before he built the ark. Now, so I, I, I want to go to Matthew sometime, but I'm going to have to stop there. But you see, this woman ha was rewarded. And, uh, and we could go to 1 Corinthians if I have time. But this woman was rewarded for her taking care of the Jews and nothing to do with her escaping hell. And these people that get on the radio and tell you from uh, James chapter 2, now you see that you can't go to heaven. Uh, you have to go to hell if you don't have works. And, and therefore, you get baptized, take the Lord's Supper. Uh, brother, uh, brother Jerry is talking about seeing Brother Richard today. Uh, I'll go ahead and miss it. Uh, he, uh, had, we, had a, we had a bunch on the radio years ago and... Uh, they, uh, they was going back and forth. And so Brother Richard, he called them up. He said, uh, I want to know how you get to heaven. And they said, well, says, and this is what they said. I heard it. I was listening to it too. And they said, well, I'll tell you what. You get uh, come up and you confess Jesus Christ as uh, Lord God, Jesus Christ God. You confess all your sins before the church. You know, that'd be an ordeal, wouldn't it? Uh, before the church, and then you get baptized, and then every Sunday morning, uh, breakfast, you have the Lord's Supper. Lord's Supper of a morning? Oh, yeah, breakfast. No, they have to have it. Uh, Linda's here, and uh, I think she's here somewhere. She was riding with an associate of hers years and years ago. And they were on a Sunday trip there to get one of those courses and uh, uh, get some more training. And this person said, the first church uh, that you come to that got the right name on it, uh, you uh, stop. Because I have got to go in and take the Lord's Supper. I mean the Lord, take the, you know, the communion. Now, I know y'all look at me like a calf looking at a new gate. <laughs> but folks, that is pitiful. That is pitiful that somebody's brain works like that. You say, you, uh, why are you bringing it? Because we care for folks like that. They're being drug bound to hell on this works system, uh, if you please, and it's wicked. There's no difference in any other uh, false prophet or whatever. And there's a lot of others I would mention. I won't mention names, okay? This woman did not get saved from hell because she hid those Jews. If we have time, we'll go to Matthew 25. If we have time, she got saved by believing God. And there is where that uh, she now wanted some benefits and some rewards and she was rewarded because she hid those Jews. Now, there's a great study on this thing of the tribulation period when uh, the Antichrist is going to, I mean, have a heyday and they're going to have to hide one another and take care of one another. And, and by the way, James was talking about that, helping them out there physically. Talking about physically, not talking about spiritually, okay? All right, if y'all allow me, I'll go to the next point. Amen and amen. All right. Okay, turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter number, on back to your left, to Hebrews chapter number uh, three. Hebrews chapter number three, and I know some maybe, just, just look at it with me, okay? Just look at it. Just look at it. Now, while you're turning to Hebrews chapter three, could I say this as lovingly as I can? You don't have four or five different ways to get saved. You don't have one way in the Old Testament and one way in the tribulation and one way in the millennial. You don't have that. There's only one way for salvation and that's believe in God Almighty. Only one. Then, then we got a problem here. If you look at Hebrews chapter three, verse seven, 
Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, the day if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation of the days of temptation of the wilderness when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. I swore in my heart, in my wrath, they shall not enter to my... What is that in your Bible? All right, let's all say it out loud. Enter into what? Rest. 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 Do you know what chapter number four is talking about? It's talking about the millennial rest. So well, they, they're not made partakers of Christ. I'll tell you this much. They'll not be if they're set on the sideline and they won't get to reign with Christ because they refuse to suffer for him or whatever and has nothing to do with their salvation. Amen? Well, let me ask you a question. Did Moses, Moses died short of the uh, Canaan rest? Came to rest, that's what he's talking about, by the way, in the following verses. Moses died short that Moses did not get to the promised land. The promised land being a type and a picture of the millennial, it's not a type and picture of uh, heaven. I mean, it is, you can say that, but I know they have the canon, I mean, it's great songs, but friends, did Moses, did Moses go over? No, he disobeyed the Lord. He disobeyed the Lord. If you're saved by works, he went to hell. No, he wasn't saved by works. He was saved by believing God, amen. And you get rewards by works, amen. And so then Moses didn't get to go over. I asked you a question, is Moses in heaven? I think everybody knows this building that Moses is in heaven. Has nothing to do with his salvation whatsoever, amen? Uh, going over or not going over, it has to do with the millennial rest. And that's what it says right there. Now, let me show you one near where we're at to get you, uh, I should have showed you this first. Turn, turn on back to 2 Timothy. Turn on back. Now, let me show you a verse right here. Oh, now listen, this will help you. This will help, this will help. I, I read it all the time. This will help. I need it. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, now watch this. I, I, you know, I, folks, I would that people would get this. You're not saved by works. You're saved by God Almighty, by simply grace, God's grace. If he hadn't had grace that people in the Old Testament, they'd, they'd all been in hell. You know that. But, but you are rewarded, are rewarded for works. You're rewarded. There's rewards. Well, look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 and look at verse number 11. This is how you rightly divide the Bible. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, that you got saved. Uh, Colossians talk about if you've been risen with him. You died with him. But Paul said, you, uh, I'm crucified with Christ. Okay. If you be dead, that's your salvation. If you be dead uh, with him, we shall also live with him. There's your salvation. There's your heaven. Amen. The whole business. Well, look at verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he also will deny us. Die, deny us what? A millennial reign, not heaven. There's where they go. They go and put those two verses, they jam them together. <clears throat> and they take verse 12. And I talked to a fellow. And I talked to him till it almost blew in my face. And he'd go to that verse every time. Folks, that verse right there talks about a millennial. It talks about suffering for a millennial. It talks about suffering with Christ. It talks about suffering and putting forth an effort to serve the Lord. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Notice, reign with him. If we deny him, he also, what? Deny him in the fact of suffering and doing what we ought to do as a saved person. Has nothing to do with your salvation. Your salvation is based on your trust in Jesus Christ and him alone for salvation. Now, some of you are saying, well, uh, what about the Old Testament? All right, just let me give you some familiar verses that we quote all the time. And that is... Uh, for instance, uh, in Numbers, chapter number uh, 21 and verse 4, 5, and 6 there, where that the people begin to murmur against Moses and against the leaders and against uh, uh, God, and they was complaining. Do y'all remember that? 
You better be careful about that. Amen. I, was, I, I, I learned a long time ago, you don't go to the table where my daddy was at and grumble about what's put on the table to eat. No, sir. Well, Numbers 20, 21, 4 through 7, they went in and, they, and, the, and the Bible says they put a snake upon the serpent, upon the pole, and they said, if you, if you look, you can live. Now, how simpler can you get? Hmm? If you look, you can live. Then, would you believe in John chapter 3, verse 14? They alluded to that verse back there. They even brought it up. As the serpent was lifted up, so the Lord Jesus Christ will be lifted up. There's your salvation. Hey, another verse. Isaiah 1, 18. Come and let us reason together. Though your sin be as scarlet, they should be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they should be as wool. There's your salvation. There's your uh, a picture there in the Old Testament, your salvation. Come, reason together, though your sin be. You know what the next verse says? If you be willing and obedient, you can eat the good of the land. Oh, there's obedience. Well, now, preacher, you know you've got to be obedient. Obey the gospel, obey the gospel, obey the gospel. I've heard that so much it's running out my ears. You got to obey the gospel. Well, that means obeying all the stuff I just mentioned. Well, I got news for you. In John chapter number six and verse 28, the Jews, uh, 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 verse 28, the Jews came to Jesus and said, what can we do that we might work the works of God? Here's what he said. This is the work of God that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, people get that all bogged down and all jammed together. Amen. In fact, in John chapter 8, verse 21, 22, 23, and 24, Jesus said to those Pharisees, those lost Pharisees, those religious Pharisees, he said, if you believe not I am he, you'll die in your sins. If you believe not I am he, you'll die. That's a condition that he laid out there. Amen. Now, you know, there's some real hard verses in this in the fact that man you scratch your head about oh me you know what are they saying I, I would like for you to turn I, I realize I want you to turn to this is a heavy one so if y'all get bogged down on this one then lose your false and I mean <laughs> uh, turn to Matthew chapter 25 I'd like for you to see this I want to just give you a little nugget here if what I said is true up to this point, if what I've said is true up to this point, then friends, this ver these verses right here don't contradict. So remember that. They don't contradict. In chapter 5, uh, 25, these verses don't contradict. There's not a plan of salvation over there. In that place, and a plan of salvation here, and a plan of salvation here, my friends, and these verses right here, in chapter number 25 and verse number 31. What is the context? When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all his holy angels with him, then he shall, shall be set upon his throne of his glory. And look at verse number, uh, this verse. Now look at it real close. Now just don't run over it. For instance, it, and now this is Wednesday night, folks. I wouldn't dare preach this Sunday morning. Tomorrow, I, I would. Dear Lord. Whew. They'd be looking at the fly counting the fly. They, what in the world? Has that fella gone crazy? Now, in verse 32, there's three kinds of people in this chapter beside the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, one of them is his brethren. Now keep that in mind. Then in verse 32, and before him shall be gathered all nations. Now Israel is never called nations, always singular, always. And before him shall be gathered all nations. After the 124,000 goes out and preaches, 
to all the world, the whole world. It's, they're supposed to go. It's, child, uh, uh, Revelation chapter 7 talks about how they're going to be sealed and nobody can kill them. Y'all believe that, don't you? Nobody can kill them. Drink poison won't bother them. Amen. There are some of those things. Amen. Go over and drink some of that. And they're going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And when they preach that, they are preaching that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is going to come back and set up a millennium. If they believe that, they're believers. If they go into the foreign world, whatever they believe that, they believe that Jesus Christ, they're, they're saved. Right then. Watch it. Here's where he uses a sheep and goat for a different reason. Now, most times sheep is used for Israel, but now notice here. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them. Not now, he's not talking about Israel right now. Them, one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Now, the, the, there's, there's a part that is saved. The part that is saved is sheep. The part that's unsaved is goats. <laughs> Amen. Think about goat. You ever had a goat? You ever had a goat? You ever have a goat to house? But don't open the door or don't bend over. Amen. He's got the sheep and the goats here. He says he put the sheep on his right hand. Now, I'm going to tell you what I think it means. And, and we can... We can discuss it all you want to. I love it. He should put a sheep that's a saved Gentiles, that 144,000, one, whoever, that believe. They're believers. They're believers. Now, I know you say, well, no, I, I, I don't get that. In. Well, notice it says, one from another as a shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep. Now, notice the sheep on his right hand but the goat on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for, for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me. I was a sick and was, ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous now, that's saved people, folks. Answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and, and fed thee and thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and so on? And he goes on down. And then the king, verse 40 says, the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, as much as you have done it unto the one of the least of these, my brethren, there's the Jews now, as his brethren, you have done it unto me. Okay. You know, you know, you know who got in, folks. He, in other words, let me give you what I think this is talking about. And, and I'll tell you what you got. And, and go ahead and just mark this one thing down. You have got churches all over America that take these verses and talk about habit. Hey, we are 100% for helping folks, amen, any way you can, but you don't help them so you can get saved. You help them because you are saved. There are people all over this country. They got liberal churches and modernistic churches and they are saying, man, we're uh, promoting the gospel. We're going to get everybody good and the Lord's going to come back and they are not, they're all millennial. They're not pre-millennial and they're not uh, post-millennial. They're not, uh, they're just all millennial. They don't believe anything like that. And you know what? You got them all over this country. But you know what? These people right here got rewarded for uh, taking care of the Jews. That's what they did. They didn't get saved because they took care of the Jews. See Rahab? Remember Rahab? They didn't get saved because they're taking care of the Jews. They got, saved, they got saved because they believed the Lord. They believed the message like I've already said. And now they then just naturally taken care, had a care for those Jews and they took care of them. Now they're going to go into the millennial and thank God they're going to reign with Christ and have a good time. Glory to God. But the others, the others, where are they going to go? They're going to go to hell. 
And wait a minute now. Well, why would they then be judged for what the judgment? Don't you know there's degrees in hell? You know that, don't you? Well, I mean, uh, it, uh, let me show it to you. Look at Matthew chapter 23. You see, folks, this is the stuff you need to study. You need to study. In Matthew chapter 23, and verse four, uh, uh, 23, verse 14. You know what 14 says? Did you know in the Vatican of manuscript, they've taken that out? They took, they took that verse out. Woe well, unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore, ye shall receive the what kind of damnation? The greater damnation. There is degrees in hell. They're going to receive a greater damnation because they are going to hell. That's what the Bible says. And Jesus gave this blistering message here in chapter number 23. And I'm telling you what, he called them snakes in the grass, uh, generation of serpents, and I mean all the all rest of it. Amen. You don't know have preachers this day and time like that. But you know what? There, there, there it is right there. There are degrees in hell. Now, why were those people over there judged? They have, they have degrees in hell. The rewards go to those that are saved that live for the Lord. Let me give you one more and we're going to close. Lord, I, that thing jumped up for about 10 minutes. Uh, turn, you, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 3. Or I, I should have read this in first uh, to, to lay a foundation, but 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, y'all believe your Bible, don't you? I think this is a Bible-believing church. But do we say that and believe it and mean it? Is it a Bible-believing church? Is this a Bible-believing church? We're a Bible-believing church. But we do believe in rightly, divid rightly dividing. Look at, look at uh, well, you, have, you have to do that here. By the way, you have to rightly divide this verses, these verses right here. Look at verse number 11. 311, 1 Corinthians. For other foundation can no man lay that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. There is your salvation. Amen. There it is. Now, after you're saved, what are you to do? Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, that's your works now. Gold, silver, precious stone. I, I'll go ahead and tell you. I think the gold is preaching the deity of Christ. I think the silver is, of course, silver. You, you, you remember the money was offered uh, uh, preaching the cross. And then I believe the other stones is souls. But notice wood, hay, and stubble. Notice wood, hay, and stubble. Which, which ones are we going to have? Wood, hay, and stubble. Wasted time. The Bible says redeem the time. Now watch it. Every man's work, verse 13, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall, it's talking about saved people, gentlemen, see the Christ now. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he has built thereon, he shall receive a what? Salvation or reward? Not salvation, folks. These people teach them salvation, and they are, they are Doug Walls. He, I had a correspondent with him over here. He's passed the tracks out in the, in the uh, Christmas uh, uh, parade, and he's passed them out. They called him, and they corresponded back and forth. They said, if you lose these rewards, that means you lost your salvation. I, I ain't never heard such a, a thing as wild in all my life. I mean, I mean, get your nose in the Bible and believe it and get away from that garbage. It says here, verse 14, if any man's work abide, which you built their own, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer lost. See? But he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. You see, by far, let me give you an illustration. Right quick, right quick, illustration. There's no person in the Bible that would illustrate this better than a lot. No person. Lot was a carnal person, never had an altar, never had prayer time. He, had a, he, had a, he didn't have an altar. Uh, Abraham did. 
He didn't have an altar, no place. Check it. Abraham set up an altar. Abraham set up, not Lot. He's down there in, in that place. Now, I know there are people that say that he partook of it. According to Peter, he, he vexed his soul with the filthy conversation that he saw and heard. I don't read any place where he partook of it. But he saw and he heard that filth day in and day out. If there's ever a man, a picture of this right here is Lot. God rained fire on that place, but he would not kill him, take him. He, he took him out and took him out. I mean clean. He couldn't take anything with him. Amen. Took his wife a few steps and she turned to a pillar of salt. <laughs> Isn't that a sight? That was a sight. Look back and see your wife turned to a pillar of salt. Because she just couldn't get away from that filthy place down there. Amen. But Lot was taken out by the hair of his head. Two girls. He was so messed up. Uh, they got him drunk. Two nations came from those girls. Those two nations troubled Israel all the way through Old Testament. Folks, you better rightly divide it. And if you go out to witness, you better rightly divide it. You better tell them that their works don't save them. You tell them that none of their works save them. But the work of Jesus Christ is the only thing that will save you. Now, time is gone, so we're going to pray. I tell you what, I want us to do this. I, I'd like for you to bow your head. Mark, won't you just come and play? <clears throat> and uh, I know you can do business right there.